Hey, Tim Schatz here with C4D Training. Today I have a little tutorial for you on applying text to a spline. I will warn you I'm going to be using the MoGraph plugin. If you don't have the MoGraph plugin, I highly recommend picking it up. It's very useful to have. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to come up here and add some text. And by default, our text object says text in it, as you can see here. So if I come down here to the attributes window, I can see where my text is to enter. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in something that was used in one of my student projects this week. Fanta good. Fanta, Fanta. Um, okay, so let's zoom out here a little bit. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the circle that we're going to use to wrap this around. So there's my circle. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate my circle so that it's kind of flat because that's the way I want the text to wrap around it. So by clicking on that and holding shift, I can constrain it and there we go to 90 degrees and now I'm going to add the MoGraph spline wrap to my text so if I take my spline wrap up here and I grab it and drag it down to my text you can see the arrow changes when it's pointing sideways that means it's going to put it in between the circle and the text it won't be a child of anything what I want is to be a child of the text so when I move over the text, I get the little arrow that points down. That's exactly what we want. And as you can see now, the hierarchy, here's the text, and here's the spline wrap inside the, the text. All right, so here's my spline wrap. I've got that selected. And if I come down here to the attributes window, and I scroll down a little bit, I have this box right here that says spline. Well, we're going to take our circle, and we're going to drag the spline down into that. And as you can see, the text wrapped itself around that spline now. So if we rotate our circle, you can see there's Fanta Good. Fanta Good. Okay. Uh, if we continue to rotate it around here to the where the D and the F are, uh, if I deselect it, you can kind of see where the D and the F are, are touching, which is really not what we want. There should be a little bit of space there. So if I select my spline wrap again and come down here in the attributes window, the from and to, if I change the from just a little bit, let's say right about there, you can see it spread the D and the F out a little bit, which is kind of what I want. So if I grab my circle, ooh, if I grab my circle and I rotate it around that way, you can see that the text is kind of separated, which is nice. That's exactly what we want. However, this is 2D text, um, kind of boring. And if we do a quick render, we don't see anything, right? So we're probably going to want that to be 3D text. And we'll do that by using an extrude NURB. And we'll take the text and we'll throw that into the extrude NURB. And so now it will extrude it. But if we look at this, it's kind of weird. See how it's extruded here and then it gets thin and extrudes it there? That's because our spline wrap is a child of the text, which is then a child of an extrude nerve. I take my spline wrap out and put it in the hierarchy. Now the text has to be above it, so we'll just swap those around. You can see now that the extrude looks a little bit more correct. So I'll show you something else here. If I zoom in uh, and I make that spline wrap a child of the text again, it gets all wacky, you can see from this direction. See how it's kind of extruding it in a weird sort of way? Not really what we want. So I'm gonna do that, and now they're together as children of the extrude nerves, as opposed to the spline wrap being basically a grandchild of the extrude nerve, right? So there we go. We have our text extruded around a spline. And we can, you know, rotate our circle and have it go around. Uh, the other thing we can do is on the spline wrap, if we come down here to the offset, we can use the offset to, to spin it around. And again, we can kind of unwrap it. You have to make that sound effect when you do that. See, it works better that way. And so now if we go ahead and we render this, you can actually see the text and you know, it looks pretty good. Uh, we can rotate it around here, grab my circle. Uh, 
Anta. Go ahead and render that. Now, if you want to say have this uh, wrapped around a cylinder, you can do the same thing. All of this is right, um, but we'll just go ahead and add a cylinder. And of course, that's a little small. Um, so I'm going to switch to my top view here so I can see. And these little orange dots here enable me to scale that. So I'm going to go ahead and scale that up until it kind of intersects the text a little bit. Um, and then now here in this window, we have the Fanta text kind of extruded from that cylinder. Um, of course, if we rotate the cylinder, nothing's going to happen. And that's probably not what you want. You probably want the whole thing to rotate. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select all of these guys, right click, and we're going to come down and say group objects and that's going to give us a null object which in Cinema 4D is basically just a folder. Um, if I twirl that down we have all of our objects in there. So now I have my null object if I rotate that everything rotates together. Pretty cool huh? So let's go ahead and add a texture. Just double click here in my materials area. Double click on my material and since it's Fanta, I always think of orange when I think of Fanta. I don't know about you. Um, apparently the strawberry is pretty good too. That's what my student was using in his uh, video this week. Uh, hit OK. Close that. And we'll apply this to the extrude nerves. And so now our Fanta is orange. And so now we render that. And there we go. And there you go. Text along a spline. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.